The next presentation is by Deborah Del Oni and Jonathan Smith. They shared a fellowship, Novel Treatment of Iron Overloading in Hereditary Hematochromatosis Mouse Model with Dr. White, Dr. Robert White is the PI. Go ahead. All right, everyone. Hi, my name is student Dr. Del Oni, and today I will be presenting on novel treatment for iron overloading in hereditary hemochromatosis. This work was done with um, Dr. student Dr. Schmidt and Dr. Robert White this past summer. So let me just turn on laser pointer. So hereditary hemochromatosis is a hereditary disease that results in uncontrollably high absorption of iron from the intestinal cells. So people will present with ex excess iron that are deposited in their vital organs. It's very severe in the disease presentations and you can get a lot of symptoms ranging from fatigue, joint pain to lots of sex drive. There are a lot of um, different pathologies that can also result from this condition, such as cardiomyopathy cardiomyopathy and liver disease. So there is a really big um, push to have um, a better solution to um, this um, hereditary disease. Right now, some of the traditional methods of treatment include iron chelating drugs, which are a long-term treatment that can be very costly. Um, and they are associated with a lot of side effects such as impaired vision, rash highs, and GI tract distress. Um, there's also maintenance phlebotomy where a person has one unit of blood taken for once, once a week for up to a year or more. It's relatively safe, but it has a lot of discomfort, vertigo, and patient compliance um, usually decreases after the first year. So both forms of these treatment pose challenges, but we may have a solution from the studies of an iron deficient mouse mutant. So the iron deficient flaky skin mouse is a mouse that has an autosomal recessive mutation of the TTC7 gene. Um, and these mice, when in their homozygous state, suffer from anemia, so they have low iron. Um, they also display a psoriasis-like phenotype. And in 1995, the JAX lab actually discovered that there was an excretion of iron in the urine that was 100 times more than normal, leading to their iron deficiency. So we wanted to leverage these two pathologies and see if we could create a cure or create a pathology or create a state where we could correct the um, hereditary hemochromatosis iron overloading. A little bit about the gene mutation. It's an FSM mutation in the 20 exon gene of TTT7. And this mutation causes the, an insertion of a transposon, a viral transposon into TTT7 upstream of exon 15. This adds an extra exon to the TTT7 mRNA frame, which then will create a larger TTT7 protein. So mice that are in the heterozygous for FSN will have half normal protein and then 50% abnormal protein. Um, they'll still have the excess iron excretion, which is something that we wanted to leverage. This is the breeding scheme we used to develop the mice. So we had a mouse that was homozygous for FSN and we bred them with a mouse that was homozygous or heterozygous for HFE. These created a double heterozygous mouse that we then bred with another um, hemochromatosis heterozygous. And then these were our experimental mice. So we wanted to study mice who had hemochromatosis, which is HFE minus minus who, with FSN in the heterozygous state. And the reason we chose heterozygous is because we wanted to not display the psoriasis like phenotype and um, the severe sickness that you see in the homozygous FSN state. And we studied their liver tissue iron levels. And we saw that the impact of having um, FSN heterozygous genotype on hemochromatosis at 10 weeks provided a lot of relief when it came to the tissue iron. So we are looking at group three here, and you can see that their tissue iron levels is much lower than compared to a mouse that just has hereditary hemochromatosis. When we looked at the tissue iron data for 15 weeks, we saw that in the males, which is represented by the blue, we are also able to see a reduction in the tissue iron compared to the normal hemochromatosis, hemochromatosis state, but the iron levels were starting to increase as compared to 10 weeks. We also noticed that the female mice had a higher level of iron storage, and we found a paper that supported this, that female mice tend to store iron a bit more than males. So that is why we wanted to compare female and male mice. So now after this, we decided to take a different route and look at HEA as a way to treat hereditary hemochromatosis. So HEA stands for uh, hereditary erythroblastic anemia. Um, this mutation is very similar to the FSN mutation, but 
The key difference is that the uh, plus HEA heterozygote mice only have 50% of the normal TTC7 protein, whereas um, the FSN mutation generated a larger TTC7 protein. Um, so we wanted to study this mutation to look at if uh, iron overloading could be prevented in hereditary hemochromatosis mice that were heterozygotes for this mutation. Um, this is our breeding scheme that we used uh, to generate our experimental mice, similar to how we generated the FSN experimental mice. Uh, we looked at liver tissue iron levels, hemoglobin levels, uh, hematocrit count, volume of packed red blood cells, red blood cell count, and serum iron. So this is the 10-week tissue iron averages uh, for our experimental or for our uh, HEA mice. On the left is our um, controls. You can see, as Deb mentioned, uh, females actually do have a higher iron count in normal mice. On the right is our experimental uh, mice. And initially, this data did look very promising because, as you can see here, uh, the male plus HEA mice or the male plus HEA HFE minus minus mice actually did have a uh, pretty significant drop in iron levels. Uh, this effect was not seen in the females, however. Um, once we analyzed our 26-week tissue iron averages, we noticed that this difference actually kind of dissipated. So uh, once again, on the left, you can see our control mice here. And on the right, you can see that uh, there's not as big of a difference in the plus HEA HFE minus minus mice. So because of this, um, we think that future studies will actually be focused on the FSN mutation rather than on the HEA mutation. Um, we'd like to fully understand the mechanism of the wild type TTC7 protein, as well as the FSN TTC7 protein, um, as well as its downstream protein interactions. We think that this could lead to the identification of TTC7 as a pharmaceutical target um, for another form of treatment for patients that are living with uh, hereditary hemochromatosis. Uh, we think that inhibiting TTC7 activity or its expression could lead to um, increasing the urinary excretion of iron in hemochromatosis. And we think that this could be a method of treatment for uh, patients. So in conclusion, we'd like to thank Dr. White as well as um, all the rest of the Dr. White lab that helped us with this. And uh, we'd also like to thank Dr. Talley and uh, Dr. O'Connor for uh, hosting the SSRF program.